What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Camp, the series where I teach you how to play Space Engineers. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, everyone can get something from these episodes, so hopefully you come out of this with more info than you started. Last episode we were talking about the medical bay and how to connect certain aspects of the medical bay to make it a little bit more powerful, but we didn't actually talk about those connections themselves. So this episode we're going to be talking about conveyors, the piece in Space Engineers that connects everything on the base. With that, let's get right into it. I'm going to press tab to turn back on my inventory and let's look at the pieces that we have, the conveyors themselves. If I press number eight, that's the little icon there. This is our first piece. It's a conveyor tube. It goes straight. You can turn it around any which direction and that sort of thing. So there's our conveyor tube. If we scroll down, we've got our, our curved conveyor tube. This is a curved edition of that. It's useful for connecting things that require a curve. The last thing we have is a conveyor junction. You'll notice that this has many different outputs, many different inputs and outputs. So this is essentially used when you need more than one uh, entrance or exit. So this has one entrance and one exit. This has one entrance and one exit. This has many entrances and many exits. They're also on the top and the bottom if you were to look there. So why are conveyors useful in Space Engineers? Well, conveyors allow you to bring things from point A to point B in your ship. Now, of course, you can always carry them along like, like I am right now in my inventory, but conveyors allow you to transfer things be between machines, like the medical stuff we have over there. To show you this, let's delete these and walk on over to our little demonstration that we have over here. These are two cargo containers that we've set up here. One of them has 100 stone in it, while the other one is completely empty. So how do we transfer the 100 stone from this machine to this machine well we can we can take it out of the inventory of this thing right here and walk it over if we want to but that's a little bit too difficult say we don't have any inventory space what we're going to do is we're going to use conveyors so let's scroll down to our simplest conveyor we're going to look for oh, that's a cargo container let's scroll down to our simplest conveyor we're going to look for the conveyor tube the conveyor tube will just simply connect these two machines once it turns green that means it's powered and it's all set up so let's see what we can do we can now take this stone and if we click on this button right here to show connected inventories we can now bring it from cargo container three to if we find the the one that's right next to it i don't know what it's called uh cargo container four there you see now the stone is inside this container what what if we want to access that stone from this thing without actually dragging it from here to here well we can do that too we can go to cargo container three click this button right here so connected inventories we can go all the way down to cargo container four find that and take it immediately into our inventory just like that conveyors make things very easy to drag from place to place but they're even more useful for other applications so last episode we talked about the medical bay and how it's useful, but we didn't actually connect any of these auxiliary things, any of these extras here, the oxygen tank and the hydrogen tank. We didn't actually connect them. So currently they're not being used, but for a little refresher, let me tell you what everything does. This is the, the standard medical bay. It replenishes a couple of things. This is the O2 slash H2 generator. It generates oxygen and hydrogen uh, from ice. This is the oxygen tank. It stores oxygen and the hydrogen tank. It stores hydrogen. Uh, but these two aren't currently working because they're not currently connected. So how do we connect them? Well, let's fly up here and take out our conveyors. This is how we're going to connect them. So here, naturally, you're going to need a curved piece here so we can curve it towards the entrance uh, area right here for the oxygen tank. And then for this one, you would assume that you need a, a curved piece here to curve it down into there. But if you use a curved piece, even though it's going to turn green and say that everything is working, the problem here is that now there's no... There's no way to connect this hydrogen tank here because there's no other exit point. Remember, I, I was saying there's only one entrance and one exit at the bottom of the curved piece. So instead, we're going to be using a conveyor junction. Use the conveyor junction. Now we have a little exit here, and it's, it's actually connected to the oxygen tank through the bottom. We have an exit here. We're going to go straight. We're going to go down, if I turn this with, uh, with end right there. And then we're going to use another curved piece to curve this into the hydrogen tank. Now everything is connected. Uh, you should see these start to fill up if we supply this with ice. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to give this a little bit of ice. Uh, 2,000, I think, is what we're going to give it. So let's give it 2,000 ice there, and you'll see the ice start to immediately go down. Even though we're not using it from the, the medical bay like we saw last episode, that's because it's being brought into the tanks here. Now you see the oxygen tank has immediately got this little one dot here. That means it's got one dot of oxygen. It's one-fourth full uh, pretty much. The hydrogen tank, however, does not have a dot. That's because it's gigantic. But you can see by pressing K on this that the hydrogen tank does actually have some fill. It's, it's got 10,000 liters of hydrogen at this point. So in this way, you can use conveyors to connect your, your machines uh, so that certain things like ice can actually be transferred into oxygen tanks or hydrogen tanks. Now, how could we use this with a cargo container? Well, Conveyors have one really cool property, and it's that machines that need something, like this, which needs ice, can take from cargo containers that have that thing. So if this cargo container had ice, 
and these were all connected, this machine here could go through the cargo containers and grab the ice from this machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this uh, to, our, to our little system here and sort of use the hydrogen tank as a pass-through. So let's go to our connectors here. We're going to turn this around to face the direction, and then we're just going to use some straight pieces here. There's some straight pieces. Let's make sure this is connected. And there we go. Let's throw some ice in here and see what happens. There's some ice, and boom, it's immediately taken. Where did it go? There it is. It's being used by our O2 slash H2 generator. And that is how you use conveyors to connect certain machines so that you don't have to actually do all the dragging yourself. So where else could this similar technique being used? The idea of bringing something from one container and having it be pulled across to the thing that needs it. Well, this could be used in a couple of different ways. For instance, if you have a turret somewhere and it requires ammo, you could have the ammo placed into a container and then the turret that's connected via conveyors would actually grab the ammo as it needs it. But one other place that this is extremely important, and you see this used everywhere, all space engineers use this, is with the refinery assembler relationship. Now, I haven't talked about these two machines yet in the tutorial series, but to give you a quick little overview, the refinery is, some, is a machine that takes raw materials and turns it into usable materials like uh, actual iron or cobalt. Then the assembler is something that takes those usable materials here and converts it to things that you can use to build. So if we go into our uh, into our production tab here, you can see that these are all the things that you need to build. So let's make a couple of steel plates. Well, we have a problem here. Now, the iron that we need for the steel plates does exist right here, but it's not actually going into the assembler that we want to build it. So how do we connect the, the iron from here to the assembler? Well, as you could have guessed, with conveyors. We're going to use conveyors to connect this refinery, which is still the same machine over there, this refinery with these assemblers. So remember, you could use a curved piece here, but if you use a curved piece here, there's nowhere to bring to this top one here. So you can't use a curved, you could use a curved piece, but there's no exit that you could bring to the top one as well. So we're gonna be using a conveyor junction piece right there. And then for this one right here, we'll use a curved piece to bring in right here. It's all gonna turn green and you'll see that everything is working. Let's hop into here and see if anything's happening. Nothing is happening quite yet. Let's hop over to our production. Something is being produced, but I guess it's being produced by this one. There we go. We've got our steel plates being made. That is one of the big uses of the conveyors to bring things from the refinery to the assembler. So I hope you now see the importance of conveyors and why they're so useful in space engineers. If you have any questions or suggestions, post those down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next Space Camp video. Real quick, before I end this video, I do want to announce that the Patreon page for this channel is now active. There's currently only one tier, but it gets you a couple of rewards. For instance, you'll get a new role in Discord if you're active on the Discord server. You'll also get access to a couple of uh, supporter-specific Discord channels. You'll get your name run in the end credits scene. I'm going to start putting an end credit credits scene after every video. Uh, so you have your name there, and also you'll have the chance for your name to be used in a video. For instance, if I'm looking for a name for a ship or something, uh, your name might be chosen for that. So if you want to find where the Patreon page is, go in the description, there's a link there. Or if you're on the Discord server, go to the updates section and the uh, the Patreon page is linked there. Currently we only have one Patreon, so that's why there's only one name in the end credits scene. But if you guys want your name there, go check it out.